I cannot think of a movie that had more hair than the Barbie movie because everyone had wigs with 10 times the amount of hair a wig would normally have in it. And it was like down to your waist every time. And it was so fun. Hi Teen Vogue, I'm Margot Robbie and this is how I became Barbie. I didn't actually audition for the role of Barbie. I produced the film, so I guess I cast myself, but I did make it very clear to Greta, Greta being our writer and director. She was always who I wanted to make a Barbie movie with. I said to her when she said, yes, I'll come on board. I don't have to be in the movie. Um, you know, I'm very passionate about making this as a producer, but I don't have to play Barbie or be in the movie in any capacity. I'm happy just to produce. And she was like, no, I really want to write this for you. And she wrote me an amazing part, so I'm very grateful. And then in the case of, you know, Ryan being our Ken, kind of like the corresponding Ken to my stereotypical Barbie, she wrote him into the script as well. It always said in the script, Barbie Margot and Ken Ryan Gosling. So we manifested that into existence as well and uh, just pretty much wouldn't take no for an answer. We're like, Ryan, you have to come do it. It's on the page, you have to. <laughs> but I'd met him before and I knew that we got along and I had a feeling just based on things I'd heard about him and I love his work. I have loved his work for so long. I thought, I think we would work well together and we did. It was, it was great. I pretty much made two requests to Greta because she asked, you know, like, okay, so the, what do you, is there anything that you want from the Barbie movie? I was like, yes, two things. A slide that goes from her bedroom to her pool because that's my dream in life and a mermaid Barbie. And she was like, really? Anything else? I was like, nope, just those two things. And it's okay if they can't be there, but I, that's, I, I'd be so happy. And of course we've got Dua Lipa <laughs> as our mermaid Barbie. And I certainly have a slide that goes from my bedroom down to my pool. And it was so fun, literally dreams come True. I wasn't actually a Barbie fanatic as a child. I actually don't even, even know if I owned a Barbie, but my cousin had Barbies and Barbies were just omnipresent throughout my childhood because, you know, she's everywhere. It wasn't something that I was really that focused on or obsessed with. I don't uh, remember ever like opening a Christmas present that was a Barbie, but I do remember opening a Christmas present uh, when I was five years old the Barbie fold-out house, which I was obsessed with. Just the construction of it, and I think I've been, yeah, inspired to world build ever since. Clearly started at a young age. So then I got to witness in real life watching <laughs> a dream house be built in front of my eyes, and I would go in and watch the construction teams when we were in pre-production, piecing this together and making these life-size dream houses, which was the most incredible thing. And people would come to set and see them for the first time, and actually start crying. People were just so overwhelmed by how beautiful they were, but also just how handmade they felt, which was always the intention behind it. I suppose I mentally began becoming Barbie as soon as I read the script. I just couldn't not read the script and be like playing it out in my head and kind of trying it on and seeing if it fit and like, oh, how am I gonna do that? And because I was talking to Greta every day, you know, these discussions were just constant and ever evolving. I decorated my trailer. I do this for all the characters I play now, but I went all out for this character of Barbie. Pink stuff, fluffy stuff, things that make me happy. Um, things that are like cute, pictures of my friends, like things like that. Just so that I'd be in, you know, a really happy, positive kind of mood. I have a Barbie perfume, so it's, that that's always the final thing for my character. As soon as I put my character perfume on, I think I, I relate to like smell associations, like sm sense memory is pretty strong for me. So as soon as the, the perfume's on, then I was like, okay, ready. <laughs> Then I have all the usual things that I do when I prep for a character, working with dialect coach and an acting coach and a movement coach and research, spent time at the Mattel headquarters, speaking to Mattel employees, asking them about how the brand has evolved over the years, what was the impotence of some of the changes that they made and how do you make a Barbie? You know, I could go here and watch someone literally thread Barbie's hair, but I also did watch you know, Barbie documentaries, did read about the creator, Ruth Handler, all that kind of history to Barbie. And also I watched a bunch of the Barbie, um, like she has a YouTube channel. And one that stuck with me that wasn't necessarily <laughs> that applicable for the movie, but I needed to hear it for me in life. Barbie on her YouTube channel did this whole thing about saying thank you instead of saying sorry. And I was like, oh wow, 
I do that all the time. I start emails with sorry to bother, but you know, da da da, like sorry I couldn't, like sorry I can't do that. But Abby has this whole lesson about like swap out the word sorry for the word thank you. Thank you for understanding that I couldn't do that, or thank you for hearing me out. Here's what I think of this. And I was like, wow, I can't believe. Barbie just taught me, I'm a grown woman and Barbie is still teaching me something. It was fun and I definitely delved into whatever aspects of Barbie I could find to help uh, <laughs> help me as a person, but also help me find the character. The time spent speaking to Greta was the most valuable for this role. We had some big lofty questions to ask, like what is the meaning of life? What is true happiness? Why is life worth living? If you could have perfect controlled Barbie land, what would make you ever choose anything else? Good night Barbies, I'm definitely not thinking about death anymore. Those questions led to some pretty deep <laughs> answers and conversations and not even answers because there aren't, there isn't really an answer. That's what we kept coming back to is like, I can't sum up the meaning of life in a, a neat little sentence. Embodying Barbie actually helps when you're wearing heels, you already start moving differently because your center of gravity is in a different place. Everyone in Barbie land who's not one of the main actors, like a speaking role actor, were all dancers. And this is something Greta had pointed out from the beginning. She was like, dancers hold themselves differently. Even when you see a dancer who's not dancing at the time, it's like, you can tell they're a dancer because they stand <laughs> with incredible posture and they just, they're poised. It's like they're ready for anything. And she was, you know, Greta says like, you, you watch an old, soundstage musical and like everyone in the background, even if they're meant to be acting casually, it's like they're looking at a hat. She wanted that feeling in Barbie land. So embodying that too, just always being poised and there's something very like certain, very intentional about existing in Barbie land. Like I'm going to the beach, I'm saying hi to my friends, I'm doing this, everything you give your whole self to it and you're brimming with enthusiasm and optimism and joy and everything is wonderful. And it's also very, intentional. I know how I feel about this. I've never doubted anything until I start having thoughts of death and then suddenly my movements start get a little uncertain. Maybe my words, I stumble on my words and I've got a bit of hesitation. Maybe I go back on myself a little bit more. And you know, in doing that, you're becoming a little more human. The hair and makeup process maybe wasn't as long as you'd expect. I've done movies where my whole body's being painted and tattooed and things like that, and that's pretty lengthy. I think we had this down to about an hour 45 to do hair and makeup. Get picked up at 6 a.m., get to set at like 6.45. Hair and makeup, wardrobe, give that two hours, then you're on set. Yeah. We have big, big wigs. You know, the key look for Barbie was this impossible amount of hair. I cannot think of a movie that had more hair than the Barbie movie because everyone had wigs with 10 times the amount of hair a wig would normally have in it. And it was like down to your waist every time. And it was so fun, but it was a lot of hair. The wigs kind of made it because it helped with that scale, like the different proportions of Barbie, giving you that fantasy feel of like, oh, something's not quite human about her. She's got impossible hair. Makeup, we just tried to make as beautiful beautiful as possible. Greta really liked the look in these like old Technicolor movies where they had this like creamy sort of look to their skin, like this flat look. Because what was most important with the costumes, the hair and makeup is that, you know when you put on an outfit and you're kind of like, I feel really good in this. Like, I think I look good today. Like you bring this confidence with you because you're like, I'm killing it. And we wanted everyone to have that feeling every day in Barbie land. All the outfits are not one-to-one -one replicas. Some are inspired by real life Barbies that have existed in the past. There might be a picture of like Bridget Bardot in the 50s or 60s, and that might inspire an outfit. Also the costumes by the end of the film, you know, the fabrics we're using are kind of softer, something more fragile about the fabrics as opposed to like these like strong geometric sort of patterns and very like sculptured fabrics that are gonna hold a shape and tailor it with such certainty. Uh, kind of by the end of the film, I'm wearing this beautiful dress, but it's, it's soft, the fabric is soft. There's something fragile about it. The pattern of the flowers, there's still flowers, but there's something less, there's something more chaotic, a bit more random about it. And it's subtle, but those things all, all matter and the jewelry I'm wearing stops being like big shell earrings that the scale of it starts becoming more human. It's like a chain necklace and a ring, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, on set every day was just, every day was the best day ever. Every day was hilarious. There are so many funny actors in this film from Ryan, who is so comedically gifted as our Ken, Kate McKinnon. I've already worked with Kate before and know that she's hilarious, but nothing can prepare you for what is ever gonna come out of her mouth. Will Ferrell plays our Mattel CEO. I mean, just so many brilliant comedic actors, brilliant actors. 
Every day was hilarious. Greta herself is a brilliantly com comedically gifted actor, so the lines she would give you were always so funny. I ruined most of Ryan's takes. I would laugh like through half of them. He would do something different every time. And I think he was just like, his barometer was to try and make me burst into laughter, which he succeeded at almost every day. <laughs> Yeah, this movie gets to some pretty deep, profound places, more so than you'd expect a movie about dolls to be. And since we were exploring things about how any person might feel, there were scenes where like things felt pretty real and raw, not just for me, like America has this amazing speech just about how contradictory it is to be a woman and how we tie ourselves in knots just to be liked, how it's just such an impossible task. You can't be all those things and, and then in the end, it's just you fail anyway, you know, so there was some, that speech in particular, I think was pretty, uh, very moving because it's true. Like you, everyone's like asking like Ken's like, what's my purpose? What am I doing here? And Barbie's like, what's my purpose? And, um, you know, the Mattel CEO who's a character in the movie is kind of like, how, I, how do I be me in this world? You know, so it's kind of everyone has their chance of having that moment, having that journey and arriving at the kind of acceptance place of um, you're good, you're good the way you are. Thank you so much Teen Vogue for watching How I Became Barbie.